What is going on, everybody? And in this video, we're giving a state of the market and stock picks for July 6, 2022. Now, if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as we do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day in the week ahead in this phenom market that is ever changing and so erratic, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Uh, but ultimately understand uh, that this market is guided purely by the Fed in its battle on inflation. Now, there is a lot going on. Tomorrow is a big day. We do have the FOMC meeting notes at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is going to provide insight into a very historic meeting that we just had that raised uh, interest rates to 75. Uh, we had an increase of 75 point basis on that particular meeting. And this is leading a lot of people into believing what is the next move of the Fed on the next meeting. Now, the meeting doesn't take place towards the end of the month, but we have banks and we have big tech coming up uh, towards the middle of the month. So with all that being said and the meeting notes tomorrow, we do have ECB notes uh, later on this week as well. ECB came up uh, today, which was really interesting because ECB... Uh, they came out with guidance on what their plan was to raise interest rates. Uh, with that, the market started to sell just a couple of weeks ago because of that. Then we find out that core inflation hadn't reached its peak. And that essentially took the market into a tumble, into a 25 point or 75 point uh, basis move uh, soon after. So tomorrow will be big. Tomorrow is going to have a huge impact on what is going to happen and what kind of insights that, uh, that essentially scared the Fed into making a 75 point basis move uh, and what could potentially lead into another 75 point or 100 point basis move into that next meeting. Uh, but ultimately, there is a lot of this month is uh, going to be pivotal and something I said in uh, the weekly updates, we could go 50-50. We have to understand that this week is normally a very bullish week. I believe it's up over 70% uh, that this current week that we're in following 4th of July is always uh, primarily a bullish week. Uh, then we also have to realize that we do have earnings. Uh, we haven't had any earnings run. Normally we've been getting earning, earns, earnings run uh, a couple of weeks prior uh, in between Fed meetings, because this is ultimately the only, the only time where you don't get a lot of Fed news that allows the market to push up. And we started to see a reversal today. It was looking really bad. Again, ultimately, because um, the ECB was saying that they can't raise rates. They may not be able to raise rates. And that could be a huge, huge issue if uh, you know Russia continues to push up prices for them. And uh, I know right now they were currently tapped into reserves uh, or getting reserves from other countries. Uh, I don't quite know where that whole oil uh, stance is as far as uh, where it goes with uh, the ECB and how they're handling it. Uh, but we do know that uh, Russia is essentially in charge over there and guiding uh, the Euro European prices with what they're doing. Uh, so when will... Uh, reserves run out and when will, um, you know, if Europe can't make any changes, make any rate increases any more from what it is, it could lead to uh, what is the big question? What will that lead to? And understanding that, um, you know, even though we can do as much as we want here in the U.S., and that's fantastic, but we have to also understand that uh, supply is uh, changed within multiple hands throughout the world. So it's not just the U.S. The global economy is suffering, and we're seeing that, and we can only do so much as a nation in controlling that and understand that's where the inflation has been coming from, uh, ultimately. That, yes, the Fed doesn't want companies to hire people as much right now. So if you are unemployed or looking for work, uh, you know, you may suffer in the next couple of months because of uh, the current stance on the Fed battling inflation. Uh, companies aren't going to hire uh, additional people because of inflation. Inflation needs to come down. And so we're trying to get a gauge on inflation and how we can combat that. And ultimately understand the root cause of this is all because of oil and where that is currently sitting. Uh, so, being said, the dollar has gone absolutely ballistic. Uh, haven't seen since the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic, uh, the dollar the dollar exploding. Uh, so, being said, 
this is there are many different things currently going on and when things are so out of whack that they aren't going off their normal uh, their normal scale uh, their, nor their normal cycles uh, that's a big cause of concern um, the fact uh, tech had a massive push today banks uh, completely cratered today uh, somehow held but uh, again tech massive push today it really helped keep the market up and then everything kind of flipped at the, after that point uh, but again i think we're going to have we're going to have non forms and we're going to have uh, employment report by friday and that's really going to give us insight into what we could expect now i do expect some sort of a rally going into earnings but is is that all we're going to get are we going to get a rally this week uh in hopes that we can get some sort of uh, cushion before the next blow comes is ultimately what we're looking for. Are we going to avoid recession? A lot of people say we're not going into recession. Uh, unemployment has to be at a certain rate. Uh, but depending what that is and depending on how things play out, uh, this market is going to be very volatile over the next month. We could push right back up. Uh, now, if you're looking at the if we're currently looking at the chart here, you know, I have these zones for 75 point basis move or that's where we're currently sitting at. Uh, maybe they say just 50, maybe we'll make a run. Maybe our rally will consist of a run up to roughly around that 40, 50 mark, uh, which would put us uh, right back essentially at the, that 20 EMA monthly. So a, a retest of that 20 EMA monthly. We came close to the 50 EMA. It's something I've always talked about. You break the 20, uh, you're going to get a nice push down to the 50. You're going to get a retest of the 20, then potentially sell back off uh, at that point. And now if we sell back off and we recover, make a lower high and continue pushing, uh, we could get a reversal. Now, more than likely with the news that's coming out, and we also still have midterms coming up, um, it can be very pivotal and we can continue to sell off. The point being is, is at this point, everything is 50-50 and the market is extremely sensitive to any information that's coming out. Uh, because of recession fears and, and what that entails. So uh, again, the next couple of days are going to be important, uh, but more so the earnings coming up are going to be extremely important. Well, now that we got bank earnings coming uh, on the, around the 15th, around the middle of the month. So about another week, uh, we, a week and a half, we're going to have bank earnings and that's really going to uh, dictate uh, uh, the direction of this market. Uh, so being said, uh, that's currently where we're at. So wa really watching this uh, 3864 uh, tomorrow. Are we going to reject at the 50 point or the 75 point basis move and kind of float around here? I think the market might because I think the market is afraid uh, that we could potentially come at 100 points. We could come at 75. Now, if we get some sort of positive data, uh, I think we could potentially run up to the 50, uh, 50 point basis move roughly around that 40, 53. But uh, again, we're, we are really waiting to see what's going to happen with uh, data. Those notes may point to something really bad and it could send us right back to 3636. And again, I don't wanna keep retesting this uh, major EMA weekly support and then break it and down to the 50 monthly. Um, it's going to get really tight here and you're probably going to potentially see a lot of chop if we do break this major support, uh, trying to break that 50 monthly. Um, Again, I think a bottom is close, but I do believe there is still, we could potentially have one major sell. Really just depends on how oil acts over the summer. If things, uh, if we continue to see higher um, inflation, I think we could potentially see one strong more leg down. And that could be the turning point for us to start heading back up. Uh, rightfully so roughly <laughs> around where everything midterms and stuff start kicking off and is all over uh, we could start making our way back to all-time high by the end of the year uh, potentially but we have to see inflation has to be under control uh, so we have to see how this is going to play out and we'll, ultimately we have to see how the fed how aggressive the fed is going to get so that is that that is the spx so really watching this range it did kind of break out of this um 38, 31 range, and then holding that uh, 37, 39 bottom. Uh, currently, right now, uh, we'll have to see again if the market's just going to hover around the 75, 100 point basis move until we get an answer from the Fed. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin.
Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is still currently holding at roughly around that 20 mark or 20K mark. Again, um, we haven't got a, a true like real break and real push down and then retest. Uh, we had some kind of a weak re retest and bounce here. Uh, we're filling in 19, 19K mark, but um, that retest will really dictate if, if we're going to continue to sell off. And again, the market is so sensitive right now. This is something why I, I go over the index. And you have to understand Bitcoin, everything, when there's fear in the market the way it is right now, and fear of the consumer uh, just not wanting to buy because they're not uh, the uncertainty. Whenever there's uncertainty, the market, the consumer is not going to buy. And so uh, that's what is dictating everything, even Bitcoin at this point. And Bitcoin is taking over something I've talked about. Uh, I think after this recession that we go through, uh, Bitcoin will be, uh, I think, part of everybody's everyday life. Uh, very much so. I think Bitcoin's uh, uh, the technology in itself, a blockchain, will be accelerated by this uh, by the uh, current recession that we're going, that we're currently going through and continue to go through. And I understand this does take time. It's, it's not a quick overnight. It's over done with uh, type of thing uh, that this thing has. It takes time to pan out. Uh, so being said, uh, that's currently where crypto is. Uh, it'd be interesting to see where it goes from this point. Uh, Tesla, again, their numbers were under uh, as far as deliveries and stuff. Uh, they're having more and more issues as far as parts, not just chips. Uh, so that is that is also a concern with Tesla. So it'll be really interesting to see what they do on earnings. Uh, their earnings is on the 20th, I believe. Uh, so their earnings is right after uh, the banks. Uh, and again, it's consolidating very nicely. Uh, if it does get a break out of this, I think we could again, again get a potential rally. Tesla, uh, I'm, I'm sure it can get, easily do 100, 200 points. Uh, for any kind of rally, uh, but ultimately understand it's not going to be breaking all-time highs. Uh, in my opinion, once this whole thing needs to blow over, general market sentiment it needs to blow over before uh, Tesla, I think, can really get some gas uh, back to breaking. Um, you know that 1,200k. I think 1,200k. We'll see by the end of the year, uh, but as of right now, uh, there's too much unknowns with the general market. Now, again, I could be wrong. Uh, everything is 50 or 50 right now. We could get one piece of information overnight or in the morning and they can change a complete dynamic of the market. And we could not even go into a recession. And that's something you have to keep in mind is that at these levels, what we're currently dealing with, everything is extremely sensitive and one uh, piece of information could change everything. And it's always that way typically, but um, more so even now. Uh, so Tesla, really watching that. Again, if we could break back above that 756, I think we can really start to get some gas. Um, have been rejected here at the 700. Again, really just depends on how we open, and those notes are really going to be important tomorrow. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out is NVIDIA. Uh, this is about, I've been watching this descending wedge, and we broke, uh, we broke it last week, and we retested it today. So I want to see if, if this is going to play out like everything else. Like it doesn't play uh play technicals it doesn't play these breakouts and we can and we break back in and just hold it or if we're gonna uh, actually get rejected and start selling heavy and break the 20 EMA monthly and, and start going uh diet and nose diving with uh, nvidia so nvidia is one i definitely will watch the downside tomorrow again really kind of watching this uh this 151 mark uh, and see if we open above or below that tomorrow and then um, kind of take that again, the lows being 140. Again, I think the market might be trying to uh, get a little bit of buffer coming into those notes tomorrow because it could be really bad. And if it doesn't have a buffer, uh, we could blow straight through that support and it could be a major issue. And I think uh, we're trying to alleviate from that happening. happening. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but the video is one I wanna watch. Uh, Google had a massive rip today, again, um, it is kind of wedging, but that top zone being the two, three, the 2371. Again, it does have that stock split on the 18th, and that is coming up. So just be mindful of that. That could potentially be, but why it had such a big bounce today is because of that. Um, but again, this one has been selling and pumping uh, just like uh, it's been almost a safe haven uh, through this whole thing. Uh, whenever people want to rush back into the market, they go for Google and it's been uh, taking off. Uh, Tesla uh, normally does that, but uh, it seems Google has definitely been leading the way. And then if we get high uh, 
high rates, uh, this thing does sell off very quickly, uh, as we've seen in the, in the past uh, couple months here. So I want to keep an eye on Google as well, Tesla, Google, uh, NVIDIA. Let's take a look at BA. Uh, BA is still holding very well with the 133 mark. Uh, again, as long as this thing doesn't crater the 132 mark, I mean, it's gone as low as 131. As long as it doesn't break that, if it breaks 131, uh, again, we're going to revisit lows. And we start revisiting lows too much, you're going to break and, and see some some levels we haven't seen in a very long time. So uh, watching BA tomorrow, uh, watching, uh, let's bring up the banks. The banks are important. Uh, the banks had one heck of a dive today. Now, this is really going to matter here. This level at the 110, the 111 mark is going to matter tomorrow. If we open below this, uh, I think we're really going to start selling heavy. It looks like we did hit the, the lower range of this uh, descending wedge and wicked right back up. Uh, now, typically after that happens, uh, you'll get the, the next day candle. It will be a pretty heavy sell day. And it would make sense going into the meeting notes uh, that that could be potentially possible. Uh, so it's interesting to see where we do end up tomorrow. Um, again, we could start running back up. Uh, but there's always uh, the concern of a recession, which is the biggest thing. Let's look at Goldman Sachs, same thing, a major flush today, then pushed back up. Looks like it's retesting 20 on the daily. Uh, BAC, same thing, uh, had a break, had a really strong breakdown. Again, ECB uh, and their concerns about what potentially could go on there. And that's something to keep in mind. This We might just be rallying this week because of um, the general sediment of this week. Uh, plus earnings mode, we got a lot of things that people are kind of pumped about, uh, like hope, any kind of hope right now, uh, people are pumping stuff, uh, but ultimately understand that if there is really bad news that come out, this thing is going to sink fast, and we've seen that multiple times. You've seen these multiple sinks. This is, again, why I haven't been swinging hardly at all. Uh, actually, I've swung very rarely this year just because of that fact that just because uh, these bad news has been completely sinking these. And if the bank starts sinking, uh, so will everything else. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. Uh, there is still lots. Those are the primary ones I'm watching. Uh, it could change tomorrow. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I'm staying with the indexes, watching the banks, watching value, watching Tesla and Google uh, to kind of... Uh, test the waters and see what is ultimately going on uh, with the general market and, and then take it from there, uh, right? Like today, uh, again, we had we were getting a good pump overnight. Then we got the news about ECB and uh, completely just uh, started selling off from that point. And, and that's essentially my point is that um, you know, we don't know if we're close to a bottom. We're not sure if we're going to reverse. I feel like we have one more leg down. Uh, one more sturdy leg down to uh, essentially price in a recession. And then at that point, um, I think we can reverse from there. But again, I think that 36.36 is a 100-point basis move. And then uh, I think a, a bigger leg down would be uh, essentially try to price in a recession. And then we could uh, come back from that point. So uh, or start making our way back up. And it's not going to be a smooth run back up. I can guarantee you that. Um, but we will see. And we'll get through a lot of this junk and then slowly start waking our way back up. Uh, again, I think we're we're getting close. We've been talking about getting close for probably about a month and a half already, two months. Um, but there's been a lot of negative news. As soon as we get a high point thinking we hit peak inflation, it uh, finds out we're wrong. And then the Fed had to do more moves. And the, them doing more moves is causing us from to sell off more as opposed to start reversing this thing back up. So so that being said, uh, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like one. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.